In this video, we'll look at regression with the TI-84 graphing calculator. Consider example 12.6 from the book. Typically, we'll start off with data sets that are collected already. But as with any data, you could go through a sampling procedure. Um, these are paired data sets, so we have two variables, and for each one we have a number, and these pairs numbers go together. So we want to put this data into the calculator first, and we'll do that by hitting stat and then enter for edit. And I like to put them in L1 and L2. So let's clear out everything first. And I like to keep X in L1 and Y in L2. Uh, but whatever's going to be plotted on the horizontal axis, that should be in L1, vertical axis, L2. Uh, independent variable on L1 and dependent variable on L2. Okay, so we have 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. 80, 55, 45, 35, 25, and 22. All right, once the data is in there, we can plot the data to get a scatter plot. In order to do this, we need to hit second y equals, and we need to go to the scatter plot. And these are turned off currently, but we can uh, turn one on. So let's just do this one. And go ahead and turn it on. The type needs to be the first type there with the dots. That's the scatter plot type. And uh, remember, our x is in L1 and our y is in L2, so we don't change that. And we don't need to change the marker. Um, check regular y equals for any equations and clear those out if you need to then hit graph. And you still may see nothing because we don't have the right window. I think a lot of times zoom stat will give us the right window. Zoom 9 and you see a nice scatter plot there. Alright, now we want to try to find the line of best fit. If we go to stat and then go over to calc, we have a linear regression feature as number 4. And hit enter and it'll say where's the x and where's the y data and uh, you can even store the regression equation somewhere, apparently. Let's just go to Calculate. Uh, frequency list, we don't want that. So let's just put a 1 there. Right, it's cleared out. Don't have anything in frequency list. And then Calculate and you get this. Now, if you're just using this procedure for the first time, you may not have R and R squared, and you will need those for this assignment. Uh, R is your correlation coefficient, and R squared is your coefficient of determination. And if you have one, you can get the other through the square and square root relationship. However, if you don't have them, the formula is very uh, complicated. We want to avoid it at all costs. So here's what you do. Uh, first time doing this, you'll have to go to the catalog, second zero, and then go down or hit the D button and go to the D's and then go to diagnostic on. And among other things, diagnostic on will make those things appear. Hit enter again, it's done. All right, so you shouldn't have to do this again unless you reset your calculator. Stat, calc, linear regression, and calculate. And you should have those appear now. Now, A is going to be your slope, and B is your y-intercept. So you would need to be able to interpret these in situations. Uh, in this problem, the y-intercept is the maximum dive time for a depth of zero feet. So uh, a lot of times the y-intercept doesn't make a whole lot of sense because you've gone outside the values. Um, if your depth is zero feet underwater, it seems like you should be able to dive forever, right? <laughs> um, but uh, here it would say that if your depth was zero feet, your maximum dive time is about 127, um, what does it say, minutes? It's not telling me the units of this. So, yeah, minutes, then minutes, okay. Um, the slope tells you that if you increase x by 1, that y would increase or decrease that much. If it's negative, it's a decrease. 
So this says that every foot you go down deeper in the water, um, you have 1.1 less minutes in your dive time. Now you're taking away a minute for how long you can be under. Uh, and then the x-intercept would tell you kind of a maximum depth that you could travel to safely, more or less. All right, so we have the equation. We can now get the equation plotted in the y equals menu. If we go to y equals, you could type in an abbreviated version, or you can be real fancy and do vars, y vars, no, vars, sorry, vars, statistics, and go over to equation, and then it's the first one, regression equation. And it, it did the full equation without rounding anything. So you see that 127. They're also going to have the, uh, the slope in there. You didn't have to type it in. Now I hit graph, and you see the line drawn through the points. And you can now trace along the line. And well, you can trace the points if you want to trace through the points. I hit up to trace along the line and you can get approximate values and even find residuals. So if you want to be at 80, right, and you want to compare the line to the data, you take the 38.095, subtract the, I guess you have to get over here as well, 38.095 and subtract the 35 and there's your residual. Um, to get a value of the line specifically, you can hit second trace and then do value and then put in some specific number like 90 and then it'll actually find a specific value for you. Sometimes the tracing along the line doesn't get you right on a certain x value so you can use that value function to do that. Um, when you now have y, you're able to do uh, whatever you want with evaluating it or finding residuals. Um, remember that the uh, R squared value does tell us more information. Let's go back to that. When R is negative, that tells you that you have a downward sloping line. When R is positive, you have an upward sloping line. R squared tells you more just the accuracy, but loses that sign. Of course, that positive negative thing is pretty obvious from the graph. Both R and R squared tell you how good of a fit this straight line is to this data. The closer R squared is to 1, the better of a fit. And that's like R being closer to positive or negative 1. Uh, the closer they both are to 0, uh, the worse of a fit you have, the more um, variation that's unexplained. So these numbers being close to 1 for R squared and close to negative 1 for R tell us that this is a very good linear fit. Um, and then that cutoff um, really depends on how many points you have. And so there's a table that you can look up and tell you how good of a fit it needs to be. And uh, I think that table is given in the back of the book. Let's see. sets, projects, solution sheets, notes, here we go, tables, here we go, 95% critical values of the correlation coefficient. So here it is. So your degrees of freedom is n minus 2. We had a uh, we had uh, one, two, three, four, five, six pairs of data. So n minus two would be four. We would look at four, which is this uh, row right here. And the critical value is 0.811. And that means that in order to really have a correlation with that and few points, you need that r squared value. Are you sorry, you need r? You need r to be at least 0.811 absolute value. Um, so remember with R, it could be positive or negative. Just take the absolute value and compare. It should be bigger than these critical values remember, because you want it to be close to 1. So this is the lowest it could be in absolute value is 0.811. And remember that uh,
that the value we had is, is negative 0.96. So an absolute value that's 0.96, that's well above this critical value, so we would have significant evidence to, uh, to claim that there is correlation here.